Either froze. So today I've got me this lovely timing belt. Even got a few of them, actually. And this idea occurred to us. That you don't need to use it solely for its intended purpose. You can also use it to improve traction. So let's throw something together and try it out then. Let's do this. The key thing here is to select a belt of the correct size. Then we deflate the wheel and put the belt into position. One thing I should mention, before we get to actually testing our uh, timing belt enhanced tires, we should see how regular unmodified tires perform. These are winter tires, and we're not expecting any miracles, though we could be mistaken. Okay, so where do we start? As usual, uh, regular viewers know that we got this incline, and climbing up this incline is actually pretty challenging. But I'll go ahead and try doing that on these regular tires, and we'll see how far up we can get. Right, so let's see what these off-the-shelf tires are capable of. Pretty much as expected. I drive up this incline every day. Let me try one more time. No surprises. Wheels are driving forward, car is rolling backwards. Alright, so our incline is not easily ascended by anything with two-wheel drive. Those cars always struggle. Front, rear-wheel drive, they always have trouble. The best I could do was get halfway up the steep bit, and from there the car would not continue to move. Now let's fit the modified wheels and see how the new tread performs. Whether it'll grip or not, chew into the snow and ice, are they gonna decimate the surface while propelling the car? Or are they not? Okay, install and try them out. Here we go. And we're about to see what the belts do for us. Those are some mighty teeth, so they should grip pretty well. Oh, wow, seriously? I was actually skeptical myself up until this moment. How would it do it? That doesn't matter. What's important is that it got up once. What happened? I got up the hill, but why is there a belt on the ground? You know, we probably rushed the installation. It worked, didn't it? I want to stop right on the incline and try, um, stop on the hill and attempt to set off. So one of the belts has evacuated, and honestly, we did have our suspicions. With the three in a row fitted to the tires, after all the tires do deform slightly, the belts aren't secured and so on, but let's continue on five belts. It drives, and it easily climbs the hill. Will you look at that? But what if I were to come to a stop somewhere around here? And attempt to set off from this position. Nope, not quite able to do it. Even though the belts are doing a good job, you got ice underneath the snow on that hill. Even with the belts, the car is unable to set off on that ice. Wheels were slipping, 
But okay, I think this is excusable. The car does start to move, but at some point it just gives up. Due to a slight lack of grip. But we do have an idea on how we can fix that. Let's carry on. We've also come up with a pretty curious idea to work out how much grip they have exactly. Connect a scale like we've done many times before. And attempt to pull away. To see what sort of load the car exerts while wearing the regular winter tires. Let's try it out. Here we go. A little bit more. So the results are in, and even on the regular tires, the car was able to exert a force equivalent to over 300 kilograms before one of the wheels began to spin. But now let's fit the wheels with enhanced grip, the ones that got the timing belts on them, and see what they can do. Let's go! Are we ready? Okay, um... Let's see what happens. Oh my. Here we go. Oh wow, we just saw 412. How much? 412. 412 kilos. And the wheels haven't even slipped yet. That is an impressive result. But I do want the wheels to spin. I don't want to be too abrupt, though, because that could maybe damage the scale. But we still need to try this out. So, well over 400. I actually had to give it more gas, because at lower revs the engine was starting to bog. 414 kilos, holy cow. And that's considering the engine was giving up, and so I had to give it some more throttle. But once a wheel started spinning, the car couldn't put any more load onto the scale. Still though, look at that difference! 300 and 400. That's an increase of 100 kilos, and 100 kilos is quite a bit actually. So we've established that the belts do work, however while going up the hill, I mean, their performance was exemplary, but when I made an attempt at setting off while on the hill, from the steepest spot on that entire incline. Didn't have enough grip. They couldn't quite make it. They did well up until a point, but then they began to slip. But let's do a few more modifications and continue the testing. Now we're going to put 600 self-tappers into the belt. One every three teeth. Put one in, skip one, two, and screw in another one. Well, I certainly hope this works. That the screws act as studs. So some people, they put chains onto their tires to be able to drive over roads that aren't necessarily suitable for regular cars. But according to our laws, you're not allowed to use tire chains on paved roads. The reason, obviously, being that they damage the pavement, which somebody is then going to have to fix. But when it comes to a belt, it's made of rubber. And who's going to prohibit you from using them given that they're made of rubber and do not damage the road? Not quite sure what the situation would be with belts plus screws, though. So look here, we've modified the belts. 
I mean, they did well as it is, but we added some studs. And now I expect there to be loads of grip, like tons of it. We should have enough engine to make it up that hill. There's no doubt that it'll climb the hill. But I also want it to be able to set off from the middle of the incline. Okay, let's try this out. Here we go. There we go. Going nice and slow. Not in any rush. Lugging the engine. And there we are, without any trouble whatsoever. It handily made it up the incline. Good on the car for making it up, of course, but this wouldn't be a surprise. But whether it'll be able to set off while on the hill, we are about to find out. I'd want to give it some more revs, but I don't want the wheels to spin. Without any issues at all. As long as I don't give it too much gas. Keep the revs down. Okay, let's hook up the scale and see what sort of a force it can exert. Something tells me that we won't have enough power, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's get everything hooked up and see what happens. What do we got? 250, 70... Why so modest? I only saw 278. It's cutting the snow. Oh wow, it's cutting the snow, holy cow. What? 180, 90, 200, 20, 30, 40, 50, 70, 80. 280 and the wheels begin to slip. Got up to 300. 300. So there are the results. A tad over 300 kilos. You'd think that with studs like this, um, the thing would just rip. I was worried that the engine would run out of steam, that the clutch would go, but the fact of the matter is that the wheels uh, just rip the snow out from underneath them. It immediately gets thrown right out from underneath the contact patch. That tells us, uh, yeah, you feel it with your hand, with your fingers. It is rock solid. Regular tires don't grip at all, but the modified ones with the studs tear into the surface. It's also soft. And uh, so these sorts of mods will allow treading over a surface that's not necessarily easy to drive on. If you have any ideas on how to modify a tire for extra traction and off-road prowess, so let us know in the comments. So those are the results, you saw it all for yourselves. That's it for this video, catch you guys later.